Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, tonight is 22nd of Rabi'ul Thani 1439. We are starting chapter 46 of Kitab al-Tawheed volume 2 in English version, page 260. Chapter 46, taking the name, judge of the judges and the like. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. This chapter talks about that the person who is muwahid, monotheistic, is a person should, an obligatory upon him, to talk about Allah in the most respectful way. So he should absolve Allah Azza wa Jal to be looking like his creation. And he should not make any creation in his rank or equal to him. And he should not give what Allah is specified with. So, the person when he says, the judge of the judges, we know that the judge, the one who judges amongst the Muslims, and the one who would account for the judges is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That name is not being mentioned in the hadith that the author is going to bring, and it's not being mentioned in any hadith. But he said, the person who is naming himself with the judge of the judges, or the likes, similar to it. Now, he's naming himself with it, or he's pleased to be called with it, whether he's been named himself with it, he named himself with it, or somebody else had named him with it, and he's pleased with it. So that would exempt the ones who have been named with it, yet they are not pleased with it. So this chapter talks about the person who names himself something which is only Allah is specifying with, and also the one who is being named with something like this and is pleased with it. But the one who is not naming himself with this name and he's being named with it, <clears throat> but he's not pleased with it, <clears throat> so he's not going to be uh, held responsible and is not going to be criticized. So any person also who is happy to be for that person to be named with that name also is under the threat. So if somebody had called somebody Qadir Qubha, or he himself called himself Qadir Qubha, a third person is happy with that name and pleased with that name also is under the threat. So the chapter is entitled basically, that is, the prohibition of calling yourself or being pleased to be called with the names which are only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we understand from them the ultimate. So, Al-Qad al qudā is a title that was spread after the 4th century. And the Dawla al-Uthmaniyya, at the last stage of itself, they started even giving lots of titles like uh, the Sheikh al-Islam, second Sheikh al-Islam, the one who absorbed Sheikh al-Islam, and Hujjat al-Islam, and all of that. Some of those names are acceptable, some of them are not acceptable. But if we have given those names limitations, then it will not be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Still, something in the heart tells us that should not be told or called with that name. Meaning, if we said the judge of the judges of Saudi Arabia, the judge of the judges of England, the judge of the judges of so we are limiting that name. It is permissible, but still, we don't want the person to be titled with this entitlement because he might go up with himself and he thinks that there's nobody better like him. What it means, by the way, the judge of the judges, that he is a person who's a judge, but he was elevated in his position so much that he's knowing more than other judges. That's why they call him the judge of the judges. It's like a colonel. Super colonel, super colonel, even sounded like a, the army. So it's been promoted to be such a thing. So we say, no, we could just call him the judge of the Muslims or the high judge. But the judge of the judges, okay, that's not, it's only for the Prophet, sorry, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're going to come to now the hadith. And before we do that, the the person or the Sheikh Mathameen who explains the book, he says, as we have explained before, Al Qada'u Qada'an. Judging or the judgment is of two types, Shari and Kawm. Shari means that the judge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
or the ordained of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take place and it doesn't take place. And it is only in what Allah likes. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks about وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا And Allah had ordained qada, qada. That is, you worship only Him. This ordainment, it doesn't mean that you're going to take place. Because some of you are going to be disbeliever, some of you are going to be believer. And as I said, it's only in what Allah likes. I mean, this ayah means, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ Allah wants from you to worship Him and to be good to the parents. And the second qada is the kawni. Translation of which you call it universal, but it's kawni, meaning that the ordaining of Allah will take place regardless of whether Allah likes it or not. So when Allah says, We have ordained that for the children of Israel in the scripture that they will spread mischief in the land twice. So that ordaining will take place, even though it is something that Allah dislikes. So that's the difference between the Qadha al-Shari and the Qadha al kawm Now, some of the students of knowledge, they might be as well wronged when they quote in their books, and we have seen some of them, they say that such and such Qad al Qadha had said, such and such Qad al Qadha had said, this is not right. As a Muahid, you should not call those Muslims Qad al Qadha, even though they have been given that title, even though they were famous with it, you should change it. You should give it their, their, their real name, whatever their name is. But don't uh, uh, narrate and uh, spread the wrong by saying Qadil Qudah, Qadil Qudah had said, as I said, he says it's wrong. Now coming to the word Shaykh al-Islam. Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad Buhab, Shaykh al-Islam, lots of Shaykh al-Islam. Now Shaykh al-Islam is not a name specified to Allah. You cannot say Shaykh al-Islam Allah. It doesn't fit Allah. Whereas Qad al Qadha, Allah. Malik al Amlak, Allah. But not Shaykh al Islam. Shaykh al Islam is not Allah. But if you understand from that Shaykh al Islam, it means that he is the one who is infallible and no one can refer except to him, then it's wrong. So Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, it means that his time there was nobody just like him. But it doesn't mean he's infallible. Nor he claims that, nor the people who listen to him claim that he's infallible. So Shaykh al-Islam is permissible because it's not specified to all. Like the judge of the judges, or the owner of the owners, the king of the kings. That's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh al-Islam, the Shaykh al-Islam, Allah cannot be given the title of Shaykh al-Islam because Islam is deen of Allah. Islam is the religion of Allah. That means Allah wants us to Islam. It's not Allah, he's a Muslim. No, it means the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deen that Allah wants us to abide with, the deen that he wants the people to commit themselves to is Islam. Uh, the word also Imam is permissible. Al Imam, Al Imam. Could say be Imam Salah, Imam. No problem about that. If you understand from the word the Imam as well, that he is the one who is to be referred to regardless of how many scholars beside him, that's not right. Now we come to the uh, author's. Uh, Hadith. In the Sahih, Abu Hurairah radiallahu narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the lowliest name in the sight of Allah is that of the man who names himself Malik al Amlak. Is it lowliest? Lowliest. Inna akhla ism in Allah, the most lowest uh, name in the sight of Allah, a man who called himself, or he is pleased to be called, the what? Uh, a Malik al Amlak, the king of the kings. Yeah, the king of the kings. Okay, because the Malik, the owner of the owners, the king of the kings, is the true translation is correct. Because there is no There king is no true king except, except Allah. Allah. The author says in a Sahih, and we said there is no principle for the Imam Muhammad Wahab in the Sahih. It could be in Bukhari, it could be in Muslim, it could be both of them. And in this instance, it's in Bukhari and Muslim. He says in the Akhna'as, and the most lowest name that in the sight of Allah, that person named himself with it, or he himself was pleased with the people calling him with that. That is Malik al-Amlak. Malik or Malik 
as we recite the Fatiha, we recite it Maliki Yawmiddin or Maliki Yawmiddin. Malik and Malik, they are the got similarity, common things, and both of them are to be the uh, fitting name to Allah the Almighty. So Malik means a king and Malik means the owner. And Malik it has sovereignty, where Malik has no sovereignty. But Malik has an ownership, and Malik maybe he is have sovereignty, but he's have no ownership. So Malik and Malik has got from one side something from the other side of something. So the Malik has got sovereignty, but it's not necessarily he's got ownership. Whereas Malik has got ownership, but he has got what? No sovereignty. So Malik and Malik, at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's got the both. He is he's got the sovereignty and he's the real owner. So when you say the owner of the owners or the king of the kings, that's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From those names you could give other names. So we said Qad al Qudah. We said Malikul Amlak. Also, and it come to us later on, Shah, Shah and Shah. Sultan al Salatin, the Sultan of the Sultans. Hakim al Hukam, the judge, the rule of the rulers. Um, also from those names, Sayyidul Nas, the master of the people. Sayyidul Kul, the master of all. Prophet said, I am Sayyidul Walid Adam wa la I am the Sayyid of Walid Adam. I know Fakhr. So these are names that are being given to title either to the Prophet وسلم, or to the Almighty Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Now we're going to come to another one, and that is Sufyan he says. Sufyan said, uh, such as Shah and Shah. In another version it says, the most enraging man with Allah on the day of resurrection and the most useless. Sah, when say Sufyan, it's always, if it's Sufyan al Thawri, will be mentioning it. If it's Sufyan like this, it will be Ibn Uyayna. Both of them are great scholars. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, he says, Shah in Shah. That's a Persian language. We had the Shah of Iran. Do you remember that? Shah of Iran. So Shah in Shah is a Persian language. Uh, <clears throat> And it's the same thing, Malikul Amlak. And in another narration he says what? Um, the most enraging man with Allah on the day of resurrection and the most useless. I wouldn't say useless, the most evil as well. Akhbathuhu. So this is another, the last thing which is that. And, uh, is say the most and uh, he's saying the lowliest means most inferior. Most inferior. Yes, insignificant, nothing. Akhna. I would say humiliated. Despicable. Nay. Right, so the ones most enraging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection and the most wretched. Nay is to have like this Malikul Amlak. Now we've got to the issues. Now. It's important issues. The first is uh, the prohibition of taking the name Malik al Amla, the king of the kings. And we have taken that from the hadith in the Akhna, the most lowest name with the sight of Allah, that the person names himself or is pleased to be named Malik al Amla, the king of the kings. Now, now. And second, uh, that um, whatever has similar import is included in it as mentioned by Sufyan. And whatever is included in it, if he may mention the Sufyan, that is, like for example, Hakim al Hukam, Qad al Qudar, Shah and Shah, and others, Sultan of the Sultan, Sultan of Salatin. Third one. The third, paying attention to the seriousness of this matter, and it's like, um, even though the heart is cocksure of not intending its apparent meaning. Even this person is calling himself, or he is happy to be called Qad al Qudar. He knows that there's somebody more knowledgeable than him, even though with his intention he doesn't mean to match Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his name, even though that would not exempt him from the being under the prohibition and under the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if we have named somebody who is to be the judge of the judges, yet he is ignorant, we have actually committed two things. Number one, which is that we have given him something which is wrong description, how can it be the, 
and judge what the judge isn't thinking yet he's not, not knowledgeable. The second thing which is always there, that we're giving him something that would match the description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though that we have no intention to match Allah Azza wa Jal in his power. So which is not correct. Number four of the last issue. The fourth, uh, realizing that this is for the sake of Allah, free is he from all imperfections. This has been taken from the last bit of the hadith of the Prophet <coughs> because there is no real true king except for Allah Azza wa Jal. So here the Prophet of Allah has given the reason why you should not be called the king of the kings. So how can you call the king of the kings and the true king is Allah Azza wa Jal. And that's a good way of teaching the people when you give them something why, oh, sorry, for example, you should not do that, but why? That is a very good way of teaching, always, when you are attaching the rule, the prohibition, the command to the hikmah and the wisdom, then the person would uh, settle to it and be relaxed for it, rather than to give him just command or prohibition without telling him why. So he would be more submitting, more fulfilling, more obedient if you give him the wisdom behind the prohibition or the command. Right, also we have in this hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this uh, attribute which is al-ghaybu, al which is more enraged, the most enraging thing to Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enraged, the enragement of Allah is not the enragement of a human being where his blood starts gushing into his veins and gets red, all of that's not to do with Allah subhanahu wa but he gets enraged in the way which is suitable to his majesty. By this, alhamdulillah, we have finished this chapter. We're going to the following chapter, chapter 47. Now. Chapter 47. Respect for Allah's names and changing a name for that reason. Bismillah. This is chapter says, Babu ihtiram asma'illah. That the respect, that means the obligation to respect the names of Allah. This chapter, it actually guides the person to an etiquette that he should have and should be emitted from the heart of a monotheistic person and from his tongue. So the person who's monotheistic, he would be very respectful in the way that he talks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, deal with his names, is respectful in the way that he deal with his attributes, deal with his religion, so he would not joke about it, and would not joke about the remembrance of Allah azza wa jal, and he would not call anyone with a name that is only suitable to the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why from this chapter, the scholars had said, it is not, uh, it is actually command, command upon you, and it's not permissible for you to humiliate the names of Allah by, for example, using the newspaper that's got the name of Allah, using the papers that's got the name of Allah, throw it in the bin and throw it in the sewage or humiliation of that. All of that is against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hajj. That is the one who upholds the symbols of Allah. That is the one who upholds the symbols of Allah. This is a sign from the heart's piety. So the person does not have reverence and respect to the names of Allah Azza wa Jal, then this is a sign of weakness in his Tawheed, in his Iman. Uh, the attributes, the names of Allah, we have discussed them before, and there's no harm to discuss them again, and again as well, maybe later on, because it's something that's very important for us to understand. And we talked about the names before, we're going to talk about them as well, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First thing, the names of Allah in terms of Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Subuh, that is all these names are indicating to one essence, that is the Almighty Allah Azza wa But in terms of its meanings, they differ. And some of them, they include the meaning of others. For example, Al-Khaliq, the Creator in as well, in it, there is, it entails the power. So Al-Khadir has got some attribute from the Al-Qadr. And it's got an attribute from Al-Alim, 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 because he has to be knowledgeable in order to work, to create. So the names of Allah, in terms of the essence of Allah, it, one, it indicates the one essence. In terms of attributes, it has more, it has, one of them got more than attributes, and some of them include the attribute of others. So some of the attributes will be included in more than one name. And as for the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
they are always not just indicating as a name, merely a name. It has to have an attribute. Like for us, a person could be called Abid. But he could be a Kafir. Or he could be a person who does not even make Ibad to Allah. So Abid is a merely name. Whereas the names of Allah always has a meaning. And that's the second issue. So Allah's names always have a meaning. Whereas the names of the people are names. It does not indicate, for example, you have probably, for example, a person called Muhammad in, and he's a Kafir. Lots of Muhammad are called Kafir. Even they call themselves Muhammad. Even a one, one, one uh, person whom somebody just told me, just on the last ahad, it was in Hyde Park Corner, Speaker's Corner, in Hyde Park. And uh, this person came with a t-shirt written upon it from the back infidel of the front Kafir in Arabic, infidel in English. And he happens to be from a Muslim country, even a Muslim Arab country. They want to call that country, they want to be having some sort of fight in my hand out here. But he was in a Muslim country, and some of those people who know which country he's from, they themselves from the same country, they wanted to beat him up. And his name is Muhammad. Allah Mustafa. He had committed apostasy. My friend, he said, I talked to him. And uh, I knew that he's messed up, basically. And it's to do with his, that uh, he had lost hope in the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. Then all his life has been taken away from him. And he said, why is me? So that he had this belief in Allah. He doesn't believe. That's why he's challenging. Let me talk to him bit by bit. He knew that he's a an, an stupid, ignorant person. Going back, anyway. So the people's name, it does not indicate what they are. So somebody could be smiling, but he's always sad. Somebody is called, for example, uh, his name is Muslim, but he's a disbeliever. So the name of a person does not indicate, well, does not mean and necessarily carries the, 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 the meaning of it. So the people's names are different. Whereas Allah's name, they carry the meaning of it. Al Rahim, Al Rahman, Al Malik, Al Quddus, Al Salam, Al Mu'min, Al Muhaymin, Al Aziz, Al Jabbar, Al Takabbar, all these names, they have attributes and the uh, entail that is an attribute. Third issue the names of Allah, some of it are known to us, some of it is not known to us. Because the Prophet وسلم, told us about the dua, and this dua that when you call upon Allah, Azza wa Jal, I call upon you with the names that you have given it to us in the scripture, or you have named yourself with, or you have taught it to somebody from your creation, or you have kept it with you in the ghaib. So there's names we don't know about. And the fourth issue that tells us that the names of Allah is not limited. It's not like what people think it is 99. No, it's more than nine. We know more than 99. So the names of Allah, it is, some of it we know, some of it we don't know. And the names of Allah is not limited. And we know more than 99 names. We know more than 99 names. Some of the books count up to 120 plus. Now, what is the meaning of the hadith? Inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'ina isma. Man ahsaha Allah has got 99 names. If you make ihsa to it, then you will enter. First of all, here it doesn't say that Allah has got only 99. That means Allah has got from His names 99, known to us, and we know more than that. And the word man ahsaha enters paradise. Ahsaha doesn't mean that you start fighting them on a piece of paper and start memorizing them. No. Ahsaha is a number of issues. Number one, ahsaha means that you understand the meaning of it. So first of all, the names. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam. You know the names. Number two, you know the meaning of the names. And number three, you implement the ibadah through these names. How do I implement the ibadah through these names? So when I call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I use these names. So if I want them to forgive my sins, I will say, Ya Ghafoor, O forgiver of the sins. Ya Ghafoor, Ighfir li, forgive my sins. I don't say, O who is the one who got the omnipotent punishment for giving me because it's not suitable. 
So, يا غفور اغفر لي. يا شد العقاب. That is, uh, uh, save me from your punishment. That's how it is. The second issue, how you worship Allah through these names, is that you implement what the name is. So, for example, Ar-Rahman or Ar-Rahim. He does an act which would bring Rahmah uh, to you. Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if you do an act which brings forgiveness, that's uh, in, in the name of the Ghafur, and so on and so forth. For verily, you should always know that paradise is not the price which is paid to you because of your deeds. No. Paradise is, you're going to enter it because you're going to, because of the reason of those things. So the reason to, or the, the way to go to paradise is by obeying Allah Azza wa But it doesn't mean that the price of obeying Allah Azza wa is paradise. Regardless of how much you worship Allah, you're not going to be able to, for example, repay Allah for the ni'mah he's giving you for the eye and the head and all of that. That's why the Prophet وسلم, he said, no one will enter paradise because of his only mere deeds. Even you, Messenger of Allah, said, even me. Except that Allah giving me the mercy. So you will enter paradise through these deeds. But it's not because, because of those deeds. So it's not the price of your deeds, your paradise. We only we know Allah Azza wa Jal will repay you with good if you make good. That's definitely should that's definitely. But when you do the good, you should never say that, oh, khalas, I'm in Jannah. Who can guarantee Jannah? You cannot guarantee Jannah. You always should be. Uh, and the fear that Allah Azza wa Jal might not accept uh, uh, your deeds and your ibadah. Also, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dilalat, meaning entailment. First of all, entailment of the whole name, which is, we call it the exact, exact entailment, which means Allah Azza wa Jal, for example, his name is, let's say, Al Khalq. Al Khaliq, it means the essence of Allah, Allah Himself, and He's got the Khalq, which is the creation. And also, it has, we call it the letter of uh, Tadamu, that is, it also encompasses, encompasses that He is a creator, and encompasses the Almighty, and also entails that it must have the other attributes of Allah, which is the knowledge. So, when we say Al Khaliq, it means the essence of Allah, it means that he's the creator, and it means he's got the knowledge, because no one would create except that he's got the knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names cannot be, have, you cannot have the faith in them, except if you fulfill three things. Number one, that is, you believe in the name. Number two, you believe in what the name entails, and you believe in what the third thing, the name has as an effect, an action. So, for example, that we said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, is Alim, one of the names, so you believe in the name of Alim, and you believe that the Allah has got the knowledge, and you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had implemented that knowledge, you could see the effect of that knowledge onto the creation. Uh, nine, the ninth issue is that names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some of them are only to Allah, like the word Allah, only to Allah. Ar-Rahman, Rabbul Alameen, and other names is only to Allah. Some of the names are common to people, like Ar-Rahim. So no problem to call Rahim, but not Ar-Rahim. Rahim, Samia, Alim. Those names are common between us and Allah Azza wa Jal, but Allah Al-Alim, Ar-Rahim, as samia so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls, in his, he says in this Quran, regarding the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ra'uf rahim And that's the two names of Allah azza wa jal, Ar-Ra'uf and Ar-Rahim. So when we say the chapter of respecting the names of Allah, that means you must respect the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From upholding them, and that you will not name any of your children or anybody with a name which is only belongs to Allah. Now we come to the hadith of Abu Shuraih. Abu Shuraih said, he used to be called by the kunya Abu al-Hakam. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Allah is the al-Hakam and the ruling returned to him. He said, uh, when my people 
differ in a matter, they come to me and I judge among them and both parties become pleased. Thereupon he وسلم, said, how nice this is. What are the names of your children? I answered, Shuraih, Muslim and Abdullah. He inquired, um, who is the eldest of them? I said, Shuraih. And then he said, you are Abu Shuraih, reported by Abu Dawood and others. Abu Shuraih, his name is Han ibn Yazil al-Kindi, radiallahu anh. He came as one of the delegates of the Prophet وسلم, with his people. So he was a kafir before that and he embraced Islam. And his kunya was Abu al-Hakam. Hakam is the judge, so he is the owner of the judgment. So the Prophet وسلم, upon hearing his kunya, he said, for verily, Allah is the Hakam, and to him belongs the Hukm. Allah is the one who is the Hakam, and to him belongs the judgment. And listen here how the Prophet of Allah dealt with something which is not right. He straight away to the point. So some people said, no, no, you have to make elucidation, you have to make... That depends upon the person, depends upon the environment, depends upon the time, depends upon the, per the, pe the people who are around you. So it, it, you cannot really all the time tell a person that if he wants to advise somebody, this is the right way to advise. No, yeah. Advising the person has got a number of ways. It's not just one particular way. Also, in Islam, as long as you are uh, uh, giving the point in the most acceptable way, it's no problem. So um, this is, I'm just saying this because yesterday I was talking about the person when he receives, for example, at the time of uh, 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 false occasions, something which is haram, like for example, alcohol, alcohol bottles, for example, he should tell the person that, you know, as Muslims, now we don't really take alcohol. So you should tell the person not just to go and take it, and then after that, get rid of it or give it to somebody else. So you should really tell the other person who's giving it to you that I don't, we don't drink alcohol. Or like for example, chocolate's got alcohol. Chocolate's got alcohol. But if the person giving you, he said, well, this person came to me, he said, oh, the person just gave me a bag. You know, a bag which is, I don't know what it is in it, but I'm suspecting it's alcohol. Uh, you know, I can't really just in front of him, you know, look at it and, I said, why? He already said, why? Can't you? I mean, even the English people, they like for you to open the gift in front of them, isn't it? And you open it and you want to look at the expression of your face. Oh, he liked it. Oh, yes, yes. So open it and ooh, give it a session. We don't have it. We can't have that. Sorry, but uh, thank you very much. You could give me something else. So you could give me what? Something else. The Prophet of Allah, he had uh, Abu Juhayn, he had sent him a garment. And that has khamisa, which has patterns. So when they put it for him for the prayer, subhanAllah, he, he just. This Khamisa, it, it, it just attracted him to stand with the prayer. So he said that to Abu Juhayn, he told him, he said, bring, you know, take this, I'm expecting you, I accept your present, but this present is going to take me away from the prayer. Give me something which is what? Got no patterns. That's it. So he said, you know, with patterns, how about alcohol? Okay, take this alcohol, give me a uh, wine uh, without alcohol. For example, grape juice. I'll accept that. Cheaper for you and better for me. <laughs> <laughs> Cheaper for you and better. But this person said, you know, you can't be, so I, what are you going to do? So he said, well, I'm going to carry it. He said, I love to carry it, you know, my car. So he got to something else now. I said, subhanAllah. If the person wants to get rid of alcohol and he has no way except that he's, I'm not saying, brother, if you didn't know who was giving you the alcohol, you go on in front, if, if, if the person giving the alcohol, you bring the two bottles, like that. We are taking Muslims. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Subhanallah. Nobody would do that. And if you had a bottle of alcohol being given to you, you don't know who the person is giving it to you. But all you have to do is just take it to the nearest bin and throw it. So there's no bin. Can you, can you carry it in the car? Yes, you could carry it in the car because you are carrying it because of what? The disposal. Disposal. Not you carrying it because you're going to give it to somebody else or, you know, to drink it or to help somebody to drink it or to sell it. It's exactly the same thing. This is when, we, when we've been given something which is haram in itself, like the alcohol. 
But if you give in something which is not haram in itself, it's halal. But it's haram for a particular usage. I'll give you an example. Person in the uh, one of these, let's say, for example, occasion, let's say Christmas, Easter, the, the love, you call that love day, Valentine Day, you've been given, okay, box of chocolate. Okay, box of chocolate. This person gave me an answer. Box of chocolate, what shall I do? Do you know the person who's giving it to you? She said, No, it's being thrown to me. Oh, no. She said, Well, I said, if you don't like it, give it to me, I'll have it. So that chocolate halal in itself. But if I knew the person who would give it to me, I will go to him. Thank you very much. We don't accept these things, even without accepting him for the Prophet. You know, eat. Even the birthday of the Prophet will accept it. So it's not just to do with your occasions as a Christian. No, no. Even the Prophet's birthday being given like this presence, we don't accept it. So you have to tell the dawah, when are you going to tell these people? When are you going to tell these people? When is going to be for you? That the rights of Allah is more valuable to you than the rights of the people. What is it going to be for you that violating the rights of Allah is much worse than violating the rights of the people? When, when are you going to be doing? When are you going to feel that? What is the tawheed in your heart? Fine, going back. <clears throat> so he says. Uh, he was Abu Shuraih. His name is Abu Al Hakam. And the Prophet of Allah, straight away, he wants to say that Abu al-Hakam is wrong. So he said to him, Allah is the Hakam. And to him is the Hukum. But why do they call you like that? That's what the Prophet of Allah is asking. Why, why do they call you like this? He says, the people used to come to me whenever they differ, dispute regarding something. And I would judge for them. And both parties will be happy. And that is why he was called the one, the owner of the judgment, because the correct judgment is the owner of the correct judgment. Abu, Abu judgment. <laughs> Abu good judgment. That's why he called. Prophet said, Oh, what a good thing it is. What do you mean a good thing? Not the Okunya, but a good thing that is to judge between the people. So he said to him, Ah, what do you have from the sons, the children? He said, Shuraih, Muslim, Abdullah. Maybe he hasn't got girls. Okay, but he's got the boys. And when we say Shuraih Muslim, it doesn't mean Shuraih is the oldest. Even he mentioned Shuraih at the beginning. Because that means wa and and it doesn't mean that it is tartib. It is like on the order. No. That's why the Prophet of Allah asked him, who is the oldest? He said, Shuraih. He said, well, you are Abu Shuraih. The person can be given kunya to a number of reasons. Could be given kunya because he is known to carry something like Abu Hurairah. He was to carry what? A cat. Kitten. Both of called Abu Hurairah, but he doesn't have a son called Hurairah. This is Kitten Hurairah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him Aisha the name Kunya Am Abdullah. Why? It's not because her son Abdullah. She hasn't got a son. No, there's a hadith which is often is got a son Abdullah, but because of Abdullah ibn Zubayr, who is the son of her sister Asma. So she's Umm Abdullah. The uh, Companion Abu Bakr never had Bakr, but he was known to Abu Bakr. Umar, he was known Abu Hafs, never had been Hafs. Prophet of Allah came to the brother of Anas and he called him Abu Umayy. Also, he gave him the kunya to Anas, Abu Hamza. And the kunya is the Prophet وسلم, he had given to Al Hassan al Hussein. Kunya is something that you are known with, and there's kunya which is not permissible or to, to, to criticize the person, like Abu Jahl. The, the owner of ignorance, Abu Ignorance, he's, that's to criticize the person. So, the kunya is a good thing. The person is known by his kunya. Abu Hafs, Abu Bakr, all of those companions, Abu Hussein, Abu Hassan. Fine. Coming now to the hadith, to the hadith, explain it. Now, the Prophet وسلم, he said to him, for oh, verily, uh, and he this is a good thing to rule between the people. But he said to him, the hukum is for Allah. It looks like, and it is the correct opinion, that this person used to rule by Allah and the laws of Allah. Why? Because he was a Catholic before Islam. So the people used to call, come to him, to them, uh, to him, and you know, with a dispute, he would not use Islamic laws because he was not a Muslim. So he does not rule by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So the Prophet Sallam, he had changed his kunya, and that's a good thing as well. He changed his kunya to the eldest son. You would not give him the middle or the, if you give yourself a kunya to one of your sons and he's not the oldest, you're gonna be make, causing trouble. It's not allowed. But if you give yourself a kunya where it's not none of the sons, it's not trouble. So you call Abu Ahmad and you got children, none of them is Ahmad, no problem. But if you got Abu Ahmad, you got one of the children has to be the oldest. He has to be the oldest. Because the, the, the young, the, oh, the, the give it your neighbor, the, the younger, then the oldest one, why? He loves him more than me. He likes him more than me. And then you will have cause uh, disobedience and as well and being undutiful to yourself from your children. So we give kunya by the eldest in order to honor the eldest. And the Prophet said, Kambil, oh, we go to the older. Kambil, Kambil, Kambil. And that is one when the three, when the Mahesa and uh, the other person, he came to go and tell the Prophet Allah what happened. He said, and the, the, the brother who had his killed brother, he is supposed to talk because he's killed brother. When he wanted to talk, he said, Kambil, let, let the older, even though he's not the brother of the one who's killed, but let the person who's all talk. So that is to always give respect to the older. That is why we make the kunya with the older. Now, uh, uh, the person who is called Abu uh, Shuraih, who has been giving the kunya, Abu Hakam, it looks like he did not choose that kunya for himself. People give it to him because they judge. That's another issue. So was, he did not choose that kunya, but actually the people gave him that kunya. As for naming yourself Hakam or Al Hakim, no problem. As long as you rule by the what? By Allah's laws. For verily, we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah Al Baqarah, verse 188. So he gave Hukam the plural of Hakim. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Nisa, verse 35, uh, that is why in Khiftum Shiqata, Bainihima. فَبْعَثُ حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِ If you're going to be scared that there's going to be a dispute between the husband and wife, then send a hakam from his side and a hakam from her side. So you call them hakam, hakam, and hakim, and hakim is no problem as long as you rule by the laws of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Calling the person Hakam or Hakim or Hakim, no problem, insha'Allah, if you rule by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so we benefit from this hadith that if the person wants to give an advice and want to change something, give him an alternative. Give him an alternative. Always. Right, go to the issues. The important issues, firstly, revering Allah's names and attributes, even though it, um, its meaning is not intended. And revering the names of Allah Azza wa Jal and His attributes by not giving yourself the names of only for Allah, like Allah, Rabbul Alameen, Ar-Rahman, all these names to Allah, nobody else. But as for the other names, you're allowed. And uh, when you give the name to a person like a Ra'uf, it doesn't mean that he has to have the attribute of being Ra'uf or Rahim. And from being as well respectful of the names of Allah, you don't, for example, use the papers called Allah's name and put them in the bin, as we have said. But he says at the end of this, he says, even if he doesn't mean that, the name, even if he doesn't mean the, the meaning of that name, that causes, uh, causes us a, 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 you know, like a difference here. We say, no, it's no problem. So uh, uh, the person who had ruled by the rules of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had called him Hakam, as we have said in Surah Al-Nisa, and Al-Hukam in Surah Al-Baqarah. Now, second one. Uh, secondly, changing a name because of that. Changing a name because of that, and we have talked about it, the Prophet of Allah, he had a number of times changed the name of a person because of what he is. Like, for example, Abdul Shams Abu Huraira is Abdul Rahman. Uh, Ibn Sakhir Dawsi and his kunya is Abu Huraira. 
and there were lots of names being changed. Barra into Zainab, Jathama into Hassana. Prophet would change the name, whether it entails haram or shirk or entails something which is not good. Entails something which is not good. Now, thirdly, taking the eldest child's name for Kunya. The eldest child, which is said we talked about it, the eldest child for Kunya, Allah Ta'ala A'lam, and that's the final thing, isn't it? Yes? Yeah. Okay, well, this will stop, inshallah, lead chapter 48 for next week. Allah <sighs> Ta'ala. Yes, doctor. Do you have a comprehensive list the names which are only designated for Allah? No, we don't have comprehensive. You could make up as many names as you want. You could make up as many names as you want. Okay, that would entail that it's only Allah can be described with that. So there is no such thing that there is a list. But you could, you know, collect as many as I've just given you some of the names that I have gathered myself. <clears throat> The Prophet is Sahih Bukhari Muslim in the Allah has got 99 names. He would have sought to it into paradise. The hadith would mention these names in Sunan Tirmidhi is not authentic. Okay? It's not authentic. Because even not just are not authentic, also there are names there which are not names. Like a Sabur. There in that 99 names. Sabur is not the name of Allah. Sabur. And that's what people call Abdul Sabur. And the Rashid. And the Rashid. And the Rashid. No, there's many more Rashid. Subhanallah. Subhanallah is not the 99 names. This is something else. They don't know what they create, but I'm talking about the 99 names mentioned in Sunan Tirmidhi. It's called As Sabur, it's called Ar Rashid, uh, Hanan, Al Hanan. As well, it's called, which is not from the names. Nah. So uh, that hadith is not authentic. All right? 120 knows 120 and not saying there are actually all of them that have got agreement. But there is a book called Asma'ullah Azza um, Because we know that the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to have uh, the positive meanings. You mentioned by Allah, mentioned by the Prophet sallam, And it has to be a name. Like for example, we have positive remember by ad dahr in the other, but it's not a name. Dahr means time. Allah is not time. But he says, al dahr So you have to be able to extract the names of Allah properly from the hadith, from the ayah of the Quran, or the hadith of the Prophet. I was, when I was a kid, uh, used to call, because uh, I used to hear my mother, she used to say, Ya Sattar, Ya Sattar, Ya Sattar, Ya Sattar, Ya Sattar, O Sattar, O Sattar. And I thought they were the names of Allah. There's no satar, there's no satar, it's sitir. In Allah, hayyun sitir, you have sutra. There's no satar. Yes, satar is the names of the names of Allah, uh, the night. Satar means uh, the one who scream. Okay, so yes, sitir is the name. So the names of uh, we've been derived, either it's a uh, direct name or it could be derived because of idafa. And, if you look at these books, they will tell you, for example, there are names which are has to have the opposite, like you can't call him Allah and Nafa. Nafa and Allah together. Okay? There's two, there's two names. Al uh, Muhi Mumit. There's no Mumit in itself. So somebody called him Abdul Mumit. I heard him. I saw him in one of the schools. Abdul Mumit. I was scared when he gave me that name. Why is he Abdul? He said, Al Mumit, the one who passes death. I said, I don't want to be with him, brother, you know? <laughs> Abdul-Mumit. But it's not a name from Allah. Al-Mumit is not. Now.
understand the link between the beginning of your question and the second part. Was they saying I mean, she said Allah's names oh. is in the book of the Sunnah. I can't understand the link between this and that. Because we say, um, we say in the attributes of Allah what we say in the essence, but they say in the essence, but when it comes to the attributes, they run away and they've been poisoned to say, no, don't say no, don't say right here, don't say wrong. That's where they run away and this comes to them. No, I don't know what the person you're talking to is, you're knowledgeable or just a layman. Layman, I mean, I mean, uh, first of all, just give them ad. Al Rahman al Arsh is still. Just give them ad. Yadullahi Fawqaidi. Just give them a text and that's it. I'm just giving those texts and what would you help you understand? I mean, Allah is speaking to us in Chinese, in the language we don't understand. Allah is speaking to us in the language we don't understand. We start. So, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He talks, Lima khalaq tu biyadayn. The one that you prostrate to what I have been created with my two hands. Well, I don't know. What is that two hands? He means Allah either is misleading us, giving us two hands, which means two powers, and, or his two hands. So what does Allah spoke? So if you're Allah speaking to most eloquent, and you know that Allah does not want to mislead us, so when he speaks to us in uh, Shifra language, <coughs> Morris code, we speak to us in proper Arabic and proper clear. So if you're going to say Shifa, that means it's not, it's not really, it's only a few people understand, the others will not understand. It's not clear language. So uh, why, don't you, why, do, why does he have to run? Just be safe. Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ala Al-Arsh is still. These people, when they run away from this, they run away because they give an example of them. Soon as Ar-Rahman, al Histawa, they imagine somebody sat down on his couch. When we talk about, for example, the hands of Allah, is, they think of oh, five fingers and the skin, some nails. Yeah. Why doesn't it jump to your mind when you say the leg of the table has got a knee, has got head, and it's got skin? Why doesn't it jump to your mind when you say the leg of the table? Have you ever seen the leg of the table, brother? Leg of the table, does it bend? Does it jump up and down? Leg of the table, the leg of the table. And this is comparison between a creation and a creation. You don't read really, with your mind have no problem to understand that the leg of the table is different from the leg of the human being. So why do you have a problem to understand that the foot of Allah is different from the foot of the creation? Why, why do you have a problem? I think we have a problem. Because you haven't seen Allah. That's why. Well, you have seen the table. So that's lack of iman. Because you only believe in what you see. And Allah told you. Ar Rahman told you. You've got lack of belief. That's what it is. You have lack of belief, but if you believe that Allah said about Himself, it's got foot, even though you haven't seen it, you'll believe in it. Allah said about Himself that He exists. Even if you haven't seen Him, you believe in Him. So uh, that's why the lack of Iman, the lack of Tawheed, that's what it is. Even as a layman. No. Let's make it a doubt of it. You know, it's made that right. What are you with it? Some of the people, it's a waste of time to argue with them because uh, it's a headache. And some of the people, they might not to listen to you, they give somebody else. So I made dua to them, inshallah. Allah said that would need them and guidance. When it reaches the argumentation point, leave it. Because arguing, arguing it will, you will not get nowhere. Just leave it. Okay? You, 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 we believe in what you like. I like what. Imam is Haqib Murahawi. Somebody told him that this person does not believe in the punishment of the grave. And it looks like that person is argumentative. He said, okay, tomorrow he will die and he will see whether it's true or not. Because I'm not going to be arguing with this guy. Then he say, oh, he will see the punishment of the grave. And then you realize, oh, there is. It's too late now. So I'm going to argue with the person who's going to be saying, okay. Uh, I'm going to argue. Allah must have. No. Always remember this argument. Oh, sorry, Uncle. It's your question. Always when you argue, you look at the person in front of you. Is he trying to give you, does he want to take from you? Then leave him. But if he's trying to take from you and learn from you, and to, yeah, you keep giving. Him. So the dialogue is always has to, you know, understood what, what is the benefit of it. So if I find this person is just want to talk, he wants to implement this, whatever he believes in. 
He has no way on chance, an inch in his brain to go and negotiate what believes in. Why are you wasting time with him? Why? Why are you being patience? I don't call that patience. I call that foolishness. Why are you There's no such thing? You're wasting your time. You could see, you sense from the person. Is he listening to you or not? Now, nah, uncle. Uncle used to fix people how? Fix problems how? In what way? Strict. Ah, that's what the street way. <laughs> strict way. Okay, he used to fix people a strict way. Yes. Muslim is? Yes. Okay, and people used to call him what? Bahai What's Bahai? Bahai brother. Brother? Yeah, no problem to say a person is Jabbar, but the Jabbar is in Arabic is a criticizing more than it is, okay, than it is uh, uh, when it comes to the human being. For Allah Azza wa is suitable to him, but for us to say Jabbar, it means that this person is linked to tyranny. Did you understand me, Uncle? Yeah, he's strict, he's strict with no haq. Where Allah is a jabbar with haq. We are jabbarin always with no haq. Jabbar. So if we call the Abdul Jabbar, it would be good. But Abdul Jabbar. Yeah. Yes. But jabbar. But we always think it. Jabbar, violent. <laughs> violent, terrible, oppressor. By the way, Allah Azza wa Jal, al mutakabbir isn't he? Can we give a mutakabbir to, when we can say mutakabbir to human beings? What? Criticize him. To Allah, it is haqq. Mutakabbir. But we, a'udhu billah. Mutakabbir that means very bad. Same thing with the Jabbar. To Allah, but to the human being, it's different. Okay, uncle? Now. Can we have an alternative for driving a car without insurance? It's simple you know, thing. The question is that these people will say that if, if the scholars give an okay for the insurance of the car, then we should have okay as well for those scholars who say they're not scholars, but who say that it is to take mortgages from the house because it's more necessary than the car. So I'm not like, I'm just going to give you something. Are we having? A, can we drive a car without insurance? Can we live in a house without a mortgage? If you look, look at that, you can't hire a car. Can you hire a car without insurance? <laughs> yeah, he Allah must have these people. <laughs> these people don't argue, just leave them, leave them, leave them. They want to make themselves halal for them, just leave them. You cannot drive a car, whether it's hired, borrowed, even borrowed, <laughs> without insurance. It's insurance being imposed upon us. But I could live in a house with that. Mortgage. Either we have a loan or rent a car or rent a house or rent a house. <laughs> Musta. Subhanallah. Public transport. So if I'm gonna go now to visit somebody and I've got ten members of family, how can I afford to go with my ten members of family onto a train and each one costs me about fifty pounds ticket? I mean how can, how can I do that? And he says, how can you give me transport during the night? I want to go to 3 o'clock in the morning. Isn't transport all the time available? I mean, that is, uh, this is, this is people, they, they, they don't, they, they, actually, they don't want you to give them a proof they're wrong. No, they already convinced themselves that it is halal. And I bet, I bet you they already have been 
you know, they're not asking before they go to the mortgage. No, no, they're already in the mortgage. What were you talking to? They're already in the mortgage for years. And they, this is what we say. The people of Ahlul Sunnah always استدل ثم عتق go to the proof and then have your aqidah. But these people, they have their aqidah already and then they will find a proof to serve themselves and help themselves. Just like Hizm al-Tahrim. Man, Hizm al-Tahrim, they want to make looking at the pornography halal. They search for it. So they have made their aqidah pornography halal. No problem, because it's an image. Why? Because we have a proof. The image is not like the reality. So the shadow of the person is not like the person. Looking at the person like this, current, straight away, is not like we could be, well, in a mirror. So we could find his tahir, if you find the woman there, like this haram, with the mirror, it's halal. Like that. And that's how it goes. So they have, it's a taqid to Muslim. We don't do that. And that's a very important point. What Shaykh al Banda used to teach us that the Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah always, they will have from the proofs, derive their aqidah, not vice versa. And he always gives us the example of Hizmet Tahir. Always gives us the example of Hizmet Tahir. Because of this, they have their aqid, they made it, and then they will search into the Hanafi or the Shafi or whatever. You know, for example, listen to the music. According to Hizmet Tahir, listening to the music in reality is not like listening from it from an audio. Not directly. This is based upon the Hanafi Madhab. Hanafi Madhab, for example, regarding the Sajda of Tilawa, they say, Sujood al tilawa is compulsory. So if you heard, or you yourself recited a surah or a verse, it's called such that you have to prostrate. Which is the correct opinion, you don't have to. Recommend it. But you have to put it in the Hanafi Madhab. So it's must. But the Hanafi Madhab ask those questions from which Hezbollah derived their ideology. They said, uh, well, if the person was in a mountain and he heard a reciter, not directly, Reciting the verse and the echo of the sajda, wow, 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 beached him. Not directly. Does he have to make sajda or not? No, they said they don't have to make sajda. It was not directly. So they said, you listen to the sajda directly, must prostrate. It's indirectly, there's no rule for that. So the same thing now. You hear the singer, how? If you hear the singer through radio, not directly, no problem. Because it does not carry the same rule. Because they already adapted what they wanted, so it's no problem to go and search into the books to support what you believe in. And that's what these people do. They have already in the mortgage, and then they got come, oh, well, subhanAllah, how could you get the cars like the house? If we have an alternative, and that is why we say, regarding, for example, AA service, you know the AA, REC, or all of that? Insurance. Now, if the person in a Muslim country is haram to take out AA because we have AA all the way on the roads, 24 hours. And with hospitality, it seems to be broke down in somebody's area, they will take you and they will not let you go without giving you food, dinner. AA will not give you that, by the way. RSA will not give you that. We we'll give you food, drink, and all, mashallah, and the night, they will sleep the night as well with us and all of that. Muslim countries. All of it like that. But in this country, if you are driving from A to Z and A to B, which is from the house to local shops and everything, you don't need it. But if, scholars say, if you are driving all the time and you are vulnerable and you could be jeopardizing your life or vulnerable to anything which is more, then the shiuk are more flexible on this issue. So if you're driving, for example, all the way and in the remote areas where people might rob you, if you stay there for a long time, then taking that insurance becomes a necessity. Do you understand that? But not for everybody. So from here to Luton, from here to Highwicken, from here to London, you don't need that. But if you go to you know, remote areas, which is really, then you cannot, it may be, it may be, that, that's what they say, basically. All of that. Necessity would be the but it's not necessity, the house is not necessity. I mean, they want to have a house in their, in their name. That's what it is. I mean, I've been renting all my life. Yeah, sure. If the person or place is carrying a bad name, will this have effect? Sorry? The person or the place is carrying a bad name, will this effect? If a person carries a bad name 
or a place carries a bad name, would that affect? I would not say it 100% affect, but we always, that we say in Arabic, each person is got a portion from his name. So if a person called Smiley, most likely you're going to find him Smiley. If a person called Hazim, Sad, most likely you find him most of the time Hazim, Sad. And uh, I mean, uh, I told you the story, I think I remember, when Omar Khattab wanted to employ somebody to be the treasurer. So he said, What's your name? He said, Kanaz, treasurer. What's your father's name? He said, Khabib. One who hides. I'm not gonna hire somebody who's his name is Treasurer and his father is what? Hides it. <laughs> uh, so the person's uh, name affects the personality of the person. Usually it's not a must, not hundred percent. So if your house called, for example, like um, you know, there's a hadith which is not authentic. Uh, but the meaning of it sound that uh, this person came to Amr uh, Khattab, he said, what's your uh, name? He said, Nar Fire. And, so, and, and which county come from? Anyway, he said, go, go to your house, it's about to get fire. <laughs> because all his name and his place is all fire and ashes and coal and <laughs> all of that, accelerants and <laughs> go to your house, it's about to get fire. Even though it's not think about the meaning of his sound, I mean, like, you, you, you are bound to take some of that. That's why the Prophet of Allah, he changed the names from, uh, like, Alas, Alas bin Sabid. Okay, Alas bin Sabid. So we call him something, well, good. Like, for example, the obedient. Because he was, why Alas? Why your name is Alas? Unless it is your father's name, and his father's not alive. So Amr bin Alas, Amr. Ibn al Asas. Al Asas didn't change it because Al Asas is father. Like Al Muttalib. Okay? Like Al Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib. Prophet said, I am Abdul uh, Muttalib. I am the son of what? Abdul Muttalib. He cannot change that. Abdul Muttalib is a kafir name. Slave or Al Muttalib. Al Muttalib is not the name of Allah. So. But you can't change your father's name or your grandfather's name. Now, I'm going to a question. Let's have the last two questions, please. For the, I haven't seen Hadi for a long time. If you come to, if you're a traveler and come to Jamaah, yeah. and you're about to finish, do you have to bring a full four rock Aisha, for example? Or if you are a traveler yeah. and you came to Jamaah yeah. and they prayed already? They prayed, they do in the last rock They do in the last rock and you join them, you have to do four rock You have to do the rest of them. If you join them, you have to do it. Only if you join them after the Ruku or the last Raka, that's where there's Ishtihad. But before that, you have to do the Fawr. As Abdullah ibn Abbas says, it's a Sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Sunnah of the Prophet. Now, but after the Raka Ruku or the Raka, because the Prophet said, he who caught the Raka, he caught the prayer. But if you caught less than the Raka, he did not catch the prayer. Okay? That's an Ishtihad in matter. Now, now, Ya Allah, I'm going to quickly. I don't understand. This person is fostering children, looking after them. Yeah. What, from the government, do you pay him money for that? Yes, okay. And the original parents also. Yes. Father is sending pictures of? Uh, of himself and uh, of the footballers. footballers. Of sending pictures to whom? To the children. How do you send them to children? How? You've got media, for example, phones, mobile? Sending the pictures, okay. Why are you fostering the children? Why did the father did not really allow to? I think there was a between the parents. And the, the government decided that they should be fostered. Okay, so they're sending pictures. So what is this uh, question? Pictures of the? Posted the photographs and 
Then he told the government I'm not going to do it. I said, I can't do that. You're going to take the children? It's not the uh, Take the children. <laughs> I don't want the children. I'm not going to say that, for example, other children, they don't want that. Maybe that child will want, but the other child doesn't want that. Okay, maybe it's offensive. Maybe he likes this one, uh, the uh, Brazilian player. Uh, you know, and then I would fight Argentina. with him. An Argentinian person. So I would fight with him. So I can't pull the picture. He goes, yeah, man. Whatever, but if they don't, just come on, they want no pictures. For them, you have to ask for shit, you've asked, you've asked for shit. You've asked, you haven't won. Um, what's the best way to get rid of um, the book that contains the name of Allah? Get rid of what? The book or paper. Uh, paper's got the name of Allah on. Either you have a shredder that would shred the, the name of Allah into letters. So, depending upon how. So, if you take the, one of the alif, khalas. To another alif, to be alif lam, because it would be la, same thing. So if you be alif lam, it can be the middle, it can be la, and al, not another word for Allah. So. That's shredder. If you can't have a shredder, for example, you could bury, uh, bury it deep, uh, or you could burn it, it's better. Yes, burn. Now? Uh, the student has an exam, and the exam runs through Maghrib and Ishkel time. The exam is in his locality. Can you delay your Maghrib? When did he start? After Maghrib or before Maghrib? Before he started before Maghrib, he has no choice. So if he can't leave the exam, because I know that he can't leave the exam, he could combine. He's combined, it's called Hajjah. Hajjah, need. At least, alhamdulillah, no Hajj. As long as that exam does not go to midnight, then he has to break the exam and to make his prayer, inshallah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah.